to the solution video for the CSX challenge, Save Output. Let's first begin by reading through the prompt. Create a function, Save Output, that accepts a function, that will accept one argument, and a string, that will act as a password. Save Output will then return a function that behaves exactly like the passed in function, except for when the password string is passed in as an argument. When this happens, the return function will return an object, with all previously passed in arguments as keys and the corresponding outputs as values. So let's first begin by writing some pseudocode. So first, we must declare a function, saved output, that takes two arguments. The first being a function, and the second being a string. We then also know that this is a closure problem, so we must also declare and return an inner function that takes exactly one argument. Now we know that we'll also need to be storing previous arguments that were passed into our return function and the values associated with those arguments once passed into our function. And so we must also declare an object which we will call cache that will store the previous arguments and corresponding outputs. So let's first begin by writing some boilerplate for what this inner function and outer function look like. So first we'll declare a function save output and I'll accept two arguments, a function and a string, which will be our password. We then will return and declare an inner function, which will take in exactly one argument, which we will just call arg. And then we will also declare our object, which we'll call cache, which will be storing our previous arguments and their corresponding outputs when passed into our func. Great. So now, within our return function, we must have some control flow logic which will handle what we end up returning ultimately. So first, if the argument that we pass in to our inner function is the password, then we'll just return our cache object. So let's go ahead and write that out. So if our arg is equal to our password, then all we'll do is just return our cache object. Now, in the case in which our argument is not the password, what we'll first need to do is invoke our function with that argument, store it within our cache object, and then return the output of invoking our function with that argument. So let's pseudocode that out. So otherwise, so in case our argument is not our password, what we'll first need to do is create a new entry in our cache object for our current argument. And then the value associated with this object key will be the result of invoking func with the argument. And then once we create that new key, what we can simply do is return the value associated with the argument in our cache object. So let's see how that looks. So if we don't hit this if conditional, else we will want to do the following. And so we'll wrap all of this logic within an else, st else statement. 
Now, to first create a new entry in our cache object, we can simply write our object index at our argument, and now our argument will be a key in our cache. And then we will assign it the return value of invoking func with our passed in argument. And finally, once we created this new key value pair within our cache object, what we can do is simply return the value associated with our argument in the object cache. Great. Now let's see how this works with the test cases. So first, the first line on line 25, we are declaring a function called multiply by two, which takes in a single argument, num, and we'll return that number multiplied by two. Next, we'll declare a function, multiply by two in log, which will be the return function that comes out of invoking save output with the first argument, multiply by two, and the string password of boo. So now, when we uncomment line 27, we are invoking multiply by two in log with just simply the number two. And since that number two does not match our password, what we'll ultimately see in our console is the return value of applying our callback function on the number two, which is four. Now when we uncomment line 28 here, we are again invoking our function multiply by two in log with a number, but this time the number nine. But still this argument does not match our password boo, and so we'll simply return invoking our callback function multiply by two with the argument nine. And so we'll see the value of 18 returned in our console. And finally, when we uncomment line 29 here, um, we are invoking multiply by two in log, but now our argument is our password boo. And so when we invoke this function on line 29, what we'll see is the previous arguments that we have passed into our multiply by two in log function and their associated values when invoked with our callback function. And that is the solution for save output. Thank you so much, y'all, and have a good one.